The world is full of amazing mysteries and adventures, and it seems that in the era of an internet we have access to all the things that we would like to know more about. You can study technology and science, literature and history, space, quantum physics, contemporary art, classical music and whatever. The whole world is in your palms. Take it and study. Everything is in your power. Isn't it? Human culture has existed for millions of years, starting from rock painting stories passed from mouth to mouth, ending or rather continuing with the virtual reality, films in 5D, 25D, and so on. We do not know the future, no matter how people would like to believe in seers and their predictions. And no one knows what will happen tomorrow or in a week. A year. Maybe in a few centuries, the Martian colonists will be filming documentaries about how beautiful the Earth was in 21st century. Despite the many themes that are present in art and characterize certain periods in history, one of them will always worry humanity. The future. This theme unites the minds and hearts of people, is a source of inspiration and genuine fear. And it worries everyone without exception. But here it is, the future, computers that beat people in the most difficult games, the virtual reality, various gadgets. Could it become better? Of course it can, the futurists say. But next to the future, there has been another reason for worries for humanity through the centuries. Simulation theory. And it would seem, what am I talking about here in a video where I'm reviewing the series? But in fact, in order to understand the whole essence and core of the situation, we have to delve into it. A little bit. Back in ancient Greece, Pythagoras founded a school in which they studied the numbers and their combinations and operation on them. So they counted, measured, etc., while considering everything that exists around them as an illusion. A similar situation with the philosopher Plato, who came to conclusion that only ideas are material, everything else is decay. French thinker René Descartes theorized that nothing that we feel is true, except our consciousness. As a result, the phrase appeared, which everyone has heard, I think, so I exist. If we describe in three words what it is all about, we can say the theory of simulation is a collection of thoughts from different people on the meaning of life, as always. After all, everyone, at least once in their life, asks themselves the question, why am I existing? So they gather together and think what to invent and come up with something new that we are either a simulation of ourselves or our brain and consciousness is a fake programmed garbage or our world is lines of code, etc. with variations on the topic. And off it went. Books, films, games such as Quake, Doom, if you thought that The Matrix is the only one who plays around with this theory, then you're just like me and do not know anything about it. Here are a couple of examples to watch at your leisure. I do not offer books, everyone's too lazy for that. Open your eyes. Dark City. The Matrix. 13th Floor. Vanilla Sky. Rick and Morty. Season 3 Black Mirror. Season 10 Doctor Who. Oh yes, even in music they touched on this topic. My beloved muse is a very prime example. They often sing about all sorts of conspiracy theories, mind control, etc. And their last album is called Simulation Theory. If you google a question like why is the topic of simulation is so popular in pop culture, you will not find anything rather than articles with statements of famous people on whether our world is really a simulation, a number of reasons why and why not. In fact, the answer to this question is very simple. People need to believe in something. Today, the conflict between religion and science has reached unprecedented heights. And this is wonderful. We're dealing with the fundamentally new outlook on life, with the glorified right to choose. And when many mysteries are unrevealed, when children in elementary school are learning things that the greatest minds of the past collected piece by piece, when we do the impossible, scientists around the world begin to wonder, where is the end? Where is the ceiling of our capabilities? Or why did it all work out so perfectly and humans appeared? So what is the West World? In this video, we are reviewing the series that were released on television in 2016. 
But only few people know that the prototype for the creation of the series was the film of the same name created by Michael Crichton in 1973 according to his own script. Warner Brothers has long been thinking about relaunching the script in a new rap since 1990s. They even invited Schwarzenegger, who wanted to become a producer and play the role of the main antagonist, but it did not work out. They even tried to attract Tarsem Saint to the project as a director and Quentin Tarantino as a screenwriter. In 2011, the Warner Brothers still wanted to create a remake. But then J.J. Abrams showed up with a plot from the point of view not people, but androids. Jonathan Nolan, among other sources, drew inspiration from computer games including Bioshock Infinite, Red Dead Redemption, and The Elder Scrolls Skyrim, as well as games from Bioware, where there is no strictly defined morality and the moral component lies within a certain spectrum, without an ambiguous division into black and white. The Elder Scrolls Skyrim has been cited as an example of a world in which computer-controlled NPCs, such as villagers, live their own lives, whether the play is around or not. And it was not for nothing that I had the feeling of being in a computer game while watching this series, on subconscious level. It was the idea of a character in a computer game that served as a model for the programmed stories of androids in Westworld, closed in an endless loop, repeating the same action over and over again. The idea of a variety of parks was also in the film. In the series, we saw the Japanese samurai at the end of the first season and the Indian jungle at the beginning of the second. The popularity of the series is justified by the fact that it appeared at the right time in the right place, and rightly attracted the attention of the viewer. The show tells us about a world in which technology has developed so strongly that humans have created androids, being like humans who serve for entertainment. The action takes place in the so-called Westworld, where tourists come to have fun and fulfill their most frank, strange or even wild dreams and desires. Where no one condemns, no one will know and where it is impossible to die. We are introduced to the main character Dolores. She's an android and lives in a world of the Wild West without realizing her nature and the unreality of the world around her. After that, the main antagonist of the first season, the Man in Black, comes into play. He has been visiting the park for 30 years, he was tired of the same story, so he started his own game. He is looking for a certain labyrinth, the secret level of the entire park. The main motive of the first season is search. The search for the cherished labyrinth as the meaning of everything that happened, which will undoubtedly lead collapse of the system and the usual values. In the series, there is a phrase of Dude in Black, this world is lacked a real antagonist, and these are the words of the writers addressed to the author of the original script. After all, there was no such character in the original movie. In the film, for some reason, the theory of Omnius Valley is omitted or crushed. It's when the human sees the machine and it looks exactly as a person. There comes the feeling of horror due to the realization of deception. Or it is set aside that machines look so similar to people that it comes feeling of affinity, sympathy, etc. Each episode lasts about an hour, which is undoubtedly very long and the first three episodes last forever, because you do not understand what is happening and where is it leading. But this introduction and disclosure of characters is necessary to understand their motivation and further actions. The lead motive that accompanied me through this season was a distrust of what is happening. I was afraid to make any guesswork at all, and the assumptions disappeared and were forgotten. A very strange feeling that keeps the show even more interesting. So why actually was this lecture about the theory of simulation and its popularity in modern culture? Besides, after watching the series, you start wondering, am I real myself? Or am I memories and self-awareness just the invention of some creature for its own benefit and amusement? The series pulls you into this loop and doesn't give any answer. Here it is, the magic of psychological thrillers and science fiction. At the moment, the full season 2 has already been released and the third one is on the way. So if you haven't watched the first one, then it's time to do so. 
Just keep in mind that there is a lot of nudity and gore in the show, even extremely disgusting and sickening moments are present. If you're not afraid of this hyperrealism, then go ahead. Happy viewing. And thank you if you watched till this moment. Make sure you write down in the comments how you like the show and see you soon.